I'm Rod Serling. You're listening to The Zero Hour. Rest your eyes. Exercise your imagination. Today, Keith Walker's whimsical tale of love and crime. The rehabilitation of Citizen Temple. Starring Greg Morris. In a mutual broadcasting system presentation of The Zero Hour. every day. What then? You're about to meet simple Tommy Fimple, an average nice man, trapped in that never-never world of error. Fimple, I told you not to touch anything. Uh, Fimple, you bring this prison down around my old head. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't... Where is the break? Where? Any hostages? Kalinsky, get out of here. There's no break. It's just Fimple. I should have guessed. Temple, I'm glad you're leaving. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Kalinsky. Tommy, pull up a chair. Not mine, you idiot. Uh, here, here, I'll sit here. Sorry about the alarm. I thought it was a light switch, Warden Warden. Just call me Warden. Hey, okay, uh, okay, Warden. Uh, uh, Tommy Fimple, it's my proud, and I might say relieved duty, to release you to the outside world. Leave that alone! Tommy, I want you to know, even though it's been difficult... I've grown fond of you in the year you've been here. Hey, it's a nice prison. Yes. Well, I think we can forget about the couple of accidents that happened here. I never knew oatmeal could burn like that. What? Oh, you mean the fire in the kitchen? Yes, well, that was unfortunate. But you did a good job in the jute mill. I always meant to ask, uh, what do you do with all that jute? We make rope, but that's not material. The big question is, are you ready to become a citizen again? Could I have a cigar? Huh? Oh, oh, certainly, my boy. <laughs> this is sort of a rebirth. Go ahead, uh, take a couple. I want you to know you seem like a father to me. Well, that's mighty nice of you. You're all my sons here, but I certainly do consider you uh, special. Got a light, Dad? Use the desk lighter. Uh, hey, I've never seen a gas lighter before. What's this little ever here? Uh -oh. Simple the lamp! You set my lamp on fire! I'll get it. There. Looks better all black like that, see? That's it. I can't take any more. Here's your $25. You've got to suit. I wish you well. Come on. Uh, gosh, Warden, Warden, I thought we could talk a while, sort of father and son. Yeah, well, you like me. Guard, show Mr. Fimple out. Now. Go straight, you hear? Right, Dad. Thanks, Mr. Kalinsky. Hey, guys, in the tower, so long. Uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, could you open the gate a second? My coat's caught. Uh, hello, this is Tom Fimple. Hello? Hello? Hello, the end diaper service. This is Tom Fimple. That's not very nice to say on the telephone. Hello? Uh, hello, miss. My name's Tommy Fimple. Oh, Mr. Fimple. Mr. Coot's been looking forward to seeing you. Through that door, please. Yes, I mean, he wants to see me? Well, you don't know how many turndowns. Where did you say? That, that door? Uh, right. You're, you're pretty. Did anyone ever... This door. Right. Here. It's 
Thomas Ulysses Pimple should be Thomas Ulysses Failure. Let me help you. I'm, I'm sorry. Leave me that stuff alone. Go where I insist. Listen, look where you're going, Clumsy. I see you. Stop. Oh, golly. Quick. Hey, grab the stuff. Huh? Come on, run. Gee, a false bottom box. That's clever. There they are, officer. Officer? Run. Why are we running? I'm a, I'm a shoplifter. <laughs> Oh, What's your name, Skinny? I'm Thomas Ulysses Pimple. Pimple. <laughs> I love it. Thanks. More coffee? Uh-huh. Oh, darn. The coffee seems uh, so I'm sorry. Uh, let me help. I just wipe you. Uh, but now it won't have to be cleaned anyway. Always something happens. Tough. Huh? You're a jinx. Did you know that? Yeah. Sure. T-U-F. Your initials. So you're next con, huh? What'd they get you for? I burned down an asbestos factory. Oh. <laughs> Come on, be serious. No, it's true. I, they fired me when I went back to clean out my locker. There was an accident. I knocked over a barrel of kerosene. It fell down a bunch of steps. A guy just happened to open the door at the bottom and it rolled right into a furnace. Well, the, the rest is history. <laughs> Boy, you are a klutz. They thought you did it for revenge, huh? What else? You really can't get a job. I can't even get a waiter. Hmm. Yes. Finish your dinner. I want you to meet some people I know. Who? Just some shoplifters. We washing the car? You'll see. Gloria, sweet, you want to help me get a job? With my luck, I shouldn't do anything dishonest. Even my honest gets dishonest somehow. Hmm. Yeah, me too. Uh, why did you become, I mean, why are you a... A shoplifter? Yeah. Well, the guy that runs this operation is Fritz Hochner. Now, I knew him when I was down on my luck, and he loaned me some money and then some more that I needed to send home, and so he's making me work it off. Well, it's servitude. Yeah. But in another month, I'll be paid off, and then I'll quit. Now, here, get ready to jump out. In a car wash? I'll get wet. No, you'll see. You ready? Go! Hey, that's clever. Now, down these steps. Underground? Yeah. It's an old gas storage tank. And they have a secret entrance in the wash tub. And customers drive in for the hot goods. They stop the wash line a minute and load the guy up, and then he's gone. Nobody suspects. It's like an old Peter Lorre movie. Okay. In here. Gloria. Gloria. Who, who, who's that skinny guy? A friend. Looking for work. I don't know. Wait. Boss. Ah, Gloria. Good. Where's the merchandise? Um, I lost it. What? You cannot do that. I have customers. It was an accident. I do not like accidents. <gasps> uh, hey, you can't do that. You first. Oh. It's not my friend. Shut up. He will wake up much wiser. I told you never to come back without merchandise I order. Well, anyway, I, I quit. You will quit when I, Fritz, hope not say so. Buford, wake this ugly person. Oh. Oh, Tommy, darling. Yeah. Uh, did you say darling? Oh, a slip of the tongue. Enough, enough. Why did you bring this? I, I, I thought you might find some work for him, but... He is your friend and he can help you. Now, no time. Tonight is a special fur sale at the Mayberry department store. I have orders. You, Buford, and this uh, will go pick up furs. And Buford will return them here by 8.30. Understood? Oh, but well, furs weren't part of our deal. Hey, if I do it... That makes us even? Whatever you say. Now, go upstairs. Buford, you will stay a minute. Come on, Tommy. Okay. Buford, it is time Miss DeMott left our employ. She is bad at the business. What would... What would you have me do? 
Why, see that she and her friend are arrested, of course. Lori, I can't let you do it. Let's just... What was that, Skinny? It's just getting a feel of the ropes. Uh, Buford, don't you think you should get the van and stand by the second little exit? That's right, but you better hurry. Yeah. How, how do you, you know, do it? Easy. By the fur wrap, I put them in my bloomers. See? Gloria, oh, yeah, that's sort of private. <laughs> oh, Tom, you're a peach. <laughs> now, for the coat, that's simple, too. Now, each of them has an electric sensor device, and I have an electric sensor device remover. I just put on the coat and walk out. Now, your job is to create a diversion if I need it. Here's the fur department. Poor animals. Yeah. Now, you stand uh, over there by the cashier. Now, if I signal, fall over something, huh? Oh, I'm good at the or something. Buford's got four. This one, it will be done. Gloria, maybe you better put it back. See that blonde girl over there? Wait. Uh-oh. I've been burned. Uh, look like you don't know me. Burned? Spot it. Hey, now's the time for one of your things. Uh, Gloria. Oh, oh, boy, now what? I know, I'll get Buford. Uh, excuse me. Uh, in a hurry. Excuse me. Pardon me. You see my mommy? No, go away. I want my mommy. Get your mommy. I'll come. Let go of my foot. No. Let me up. Give me a ride on your shoulder. Let go, kid. I'll eat you. Don't beat me, mister. Don't beat me. Oh, Jiminy. Well, you need the nice man alone. Get that good as foot. Thank you, ma'am. The, the, the door. Where, where's the door? Ah. Hubert. Wait, it's Gloria. She's... Hey! Let go of my door. You gotta help. Gloria's been burned. That's too bad. See you, sucker. What the... What the Gloria! Let me go. I haven't done anything. Quiet! Gloria? Tom? Tom Fimple? Sir? Warden, Warden. My boy, what a nice surprise. Uh, sir, what are you doing here? Uh, nice seeing you. I have to go. Well, hold on. What was that scene with the girls all about? Warden, I gotta talk to you. Well, that's extraordinary. And you really love this girl? Oh, short notice, I know, but I do. What about these nefarious characters she works for? Well, I'm convinced they've picked on her to store security. Then she's forced to shoplift, eh? Yeah, some sort of bondage to this Fritz Hopner. Hmm. But she really knows how they go about this business? Yes. But she really doesn't want to. She needs a chance to go honest. Like you gave me. Dad. Dad? Well, isn't that nice? Okay, I've got an idea. <laughs> It just so happens I'm an old friend of J.D. Mayberry. Tom Warden, you old son of a... Come on in. J.D., meet Tom Fipple, um, an ex-pupil of mine. Well, please, son, sit down. Uh, drink? J.D., I've got a favor to ask. Well, anything, you name it. Your security people are holding a girl. Uh, what's her name, Tom? Uh, Gloria DeMott. Uh, DeMott, yes. Could you have her set up, J.D.? Well, uh, certainly, if you say so. Security, Sandy Marshall. I want to see a lawyer. This is Mayberry. Is that uh, Gloria DeMott? Yes, sir. A real hard case. Bring her to my office, will you? Yes, sir, right away. It'll be just a moment, Warden. Shoplifters will be the death of me. You know my chain loses close to a million a year. Tough to catch, are they, J.D.? Like scratching your back. I've got good security people, but uh, come in. Here she is, Mr. Mayberry. All right, Sandy, thank you. <laughs> oh, Tommy, they caught you too. <laughs> uh, Miss DeMarc, no one's caught your young friend. Uh, well, please sit down. <laughs> Gloria, Gloria, this is my friend, the warden. Remember I, I told you? Uh, I have the pen. Um... Oh, well, hi, Warden Warden. I'll make it short, J.D. These two people are in love. Oh, 
Oh. Uh, Tommy here tells me Mr. Bart is under the thumb of a gang of those shoplifting curmudgeons. Oh. Uh, how would you like to catch them all? We do that and I'd be indebted for life. Okay, here's what we do. A car wash. I can't believe it. Yes, sir. They, they store all the goods on the ground. Well, there they go. And justly deserved, if I say so. Mr. Mayberry, would you like to go down inside? I certainly would. Will you look at that? Coats, TV sets, refrigerators. I, I don't believe it. Shoes, purses. Oh, look here. One of my competitor's dresses. Shoddy merchandise. Oh, there's more, sir. In the next room is heavy stuff, like jewelry. Uh, and, J.B., what we uh, talked about? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, right. Uh, Mr. Mott, Mr. Pipple, how would you two like to come to work for my stores? Would, would we? we? <laughs> Warden's idea. And I agree. I mean, what better way to catch shoplifters than to use someone with inside knowledge? Well, terrific. Let me shake your hand. Oops. I did it again. Oh, tough. <laughs> J.D., you made a great decision. Uh, uh-huh. I'm Rod Serling. Close your eyes. Exercise your imagination. And join us again on our next presentation of The Zero Hour. The Rehabilitation of Citizen Pimple is an original radio drama by Keith Walker. Greg Morris was heard as Tommy Pimple. Featured in the cast were Margaret Maloney, Harold Perry, Byron Kane, Bob Easton, Bill Keane, and Jane Webb. Zero Hour, created by J.M. Colas, directed by Don Hills, is produced in Hollywood. Mutual Broadcasting System by Radio Productions Incorporated. Music is composed and conducted by Stanley D. Hoffman, Rochelle Sherman, associate producer. This has been a presentation of the Mutual Broadcasting System.